Hello, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Dr. Stock here, doctor of education, and the CPI report will likely have printed by the time that you watch this video, and we'll find out if we came in at consensus at around 0.4 for both core and all items for CPI. And if you're seeing wild amounts of green in the market, it means that we've got a really good print coming out for us and that inflation has shown uh, further signs of, of slowing. Uh, or weakening. And if you see uh, lots and lots of red in the market, it means that, well, we've probably seen something that came in above consensus. If you see only a small amount of red, I expect, and like I said, you're going to find out very soon if I'm right or if I'm wrong, or I'm going to find out that very soon. You know, if we come in a consensus, that's what we'll get. In this video, I want to talk about Airbnb because they report earnings today after the market closes. And then I also want to talk about DraftKings as they have earnings coming up Thursday. February 16th, and what I expect for that to happen as well. So with that said, I am Dr. Stock, Doctor of Education. Glad you're watching. Let's get right into it. All right, so I have here the expectations for Airbnb for Q3. And some good news that we have here is that they're expected to see growth coming up in the fourth quarter. So 1.8 billion up to 1.88 billion. So we'll have to watch that reflecting growth of 17 to 23%. So while that is very good to see that sort of growth come out, it is slower than what they had in Q3. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for the speed at which Airbnb grows as they age as a company. Some of that growth could slow down over time as they become that mature company that they're growing into. And it does say, however, they expect some softness in their nights and experiences booked. And it says net cancellations and alterations will moderate slightly compared to Q3 2022. And this is more of a state of average daily rates in Q4 will face some pressure due to Forex headwinds and an unfavorable business mix. So this could say that they're looking for soft earnings coming out in Q4. And if we get soft earnings coming out for Q4 and we get soft guidance coming up, then we could see weakness in Airbnb's price action when we look at the charts for that. I also want to bring up DraftKings. And so for DraftKings, I just wanted to show you the earnings per share that we have expected, and they do come in slightly above every time. However, they are still losing for the foreseeable future moving forward from here. So if we move down, we have uh, the fourth quarter of 2022, and then it looks like we have some seasonality coming up with uh, 2023 uh, for the uh, first, second, and third quarters. Also for DraftKings, when we look at the yearly earnings forecast, you can see that there is a road to profitability expected in their forecasts. However, up through 2025, it's not there yet. So DraftKings is going to be highly speculative because while they don't make money yet, they haven't yet shown that they can be profitable. So any investment into DraftKings could be considered especially risky as they don't really yet return to their investors. And when we they have the, the potential to do so, and as the sports betting industry grow, as the online sports betting industry grows, DraftKings is positioned to take well advantage of that. So investing early might give you the chance at bigger returns over time, especially as they near profitability and DraftKings being one of the leaders in the field. They are ones that people are betting on to uh, to take that place. So Airbnb is currently profitable. You can see that uh, the earnings per share surged to $1.79 during the third quarter. And they called it the biggest, most profitable quarter ever. So that's good for Airbnb. Hopefully it's carry forward strength for their business. However, they did say that they expect some softness. And like I said, that guidance that we have coming out of Airbnb is going to be very telling, not only for their own company, but also for the upcoming travel season for 2023. So let's go over the charts. All right. So I have Airbnb pulled up. And we can see the sell-off that we experienced throughout the rest of the market. I'm not going to cover that. However, if we move over here, we do have this narrowing of the gap between the 200-day on top and the 50-day on the bottom. That could lead up to a golden cross under the right conditions, but narrowing isn't enough because here we almost had that golden cross, and then we there was no crossover from the 50-day through the slower-moving 200-day, and then we had that widening, and then we neared back uh, towards it again, which is, again, good. However, once again, prices kept on falling. So now will we just get close to that 200 day and then will the prices drop off? Or is that something that we're going to continue to see move forward? So if we get a good surprise, we could have this 200 day here as support. And we could also break this little area that we have right here with the prices uh, tapering off. So we have room up to about 121. So we could see several percent move up from there. As a matter of fact, let me slap that on. There we go. So you can see 120 is actually a pretty hard resist as it shows up 
several times throughout their chart. And then if we put another horizontal line on here across the tops of these prices, it looks like we have another area of resistance at about 125 as well. So we have room for maybe 3% before we hit the, the first area of resistance. Uh, maybe you could round up to 4% if you want to from yesterday's close. If we take a look in the pre-market for how it's doing, you can see in the pre-market that prices have drifted upwards over time. They do report in the after hours. So we want to watch for that to happen. Now let's talk about should they happen to falter from where they're at. The 200 day is all the way down at about $108 and they closed at 116. So it could find support right around $8 down from where it's at now. So seven or 8% downward, it has room to move with not a lot of obvious support in between there. Let's move over to our friend DraftKings. And like I said, DraftKings is the riskier of the two, uh, being as though they are not yet profitable. And you can see that's actually kind of beautiful here. Not, not necessarily that it's down over the time, but look at that resistance, how well DraftKings follows that 200-day moving average and being down below it would certainly speak to that bearish trend that we've seen. We've almost had a golden cross there, and however, it failed to produce. And we have recently broken well above the 200-day, which is good. And the 200-day has also bottomed out and actually started to inflect upward. So that could be very good for DraftKings over longer term. Earnings, I don't know that earnings are going to be so kind to them. Now they have sold off. Looks pretty significant from the 9th, which was Thursday of last week, the 10th, Friday of last week. And then now, and now we have this final candle right here with a little bit of indecision over what's going to happen. So the market could totally have an impact on that, depending on which way the CPI takes us. And then the earnings coming out on Thursday could also have a heavy influence on that as well. DraftKings does have a, a habit of beating consensus. However, remember, they are not yet profitable. It is highly speculative. And so that would be something to just watch out for. Should you be a person who decides to buy into DraftKings is that it is definitely one of the riskier assets out there as it still needs to prove itself as a company that it can be profitable and bringing down some of those costs that it has in advertisement and also probably with some of its payouts it's going to be subject to if we, there are a lot of surprises and they pay out more money uh, than expected. That's just another thing that can really impact the company's business. So let me wrap this thing up for you. Like I said, if you're watching this, uh, which comes out at 8.30, same time as the CPI, then it's already printed. My expectation is that we would come in at consensus or a little bit above. We'll happen to see if I'm right or if I'm wrong. And you guys can tell me down in the comments if I was right, you can say you were right. And if I was wrong, you can say you were wrong. And then we'll plan forward from there to see what we're seeing for the uh, personal income and outlays, which comes to closer to the end of the month and also PCE index that comes out at the end of the month. And PCE is going to be a uh, very, very telling for us. Uh, the Fed loves to watch the PCE more than they do the CPI. The CPI just happens to be that first report that we have between the two of them that, that occurs after the FOMC meeting. So people are chomping at the bit looking for that evidence that inflation has either spiked up on us or that it's in, in moderating further. And well, let's pray for moderation for the, the general good and we'll, and, you know, in a very selfish and myopic way, you know, if I'm right and we happen to fall a little bit from here, then my short hedge position pays off. And, you know, I guess I'll, woo, and then back on, uh, back to the grindstone. Uh, no over celebrating. Uh, and there's also no over complaining. Just looking forward to the next opportunity. That's what I have for you guys. If you want to hear more of my commentary and see more of what I have to offer, that link for the Patreon is down in the description. I'd absolutely love to see you over there. Be a member of the community and uh, and share your ideas, share your thoughts and share your interests. And, uh, and I'll share mine and I'll share my research. And also there's the Patreon exclusive videos that I put over there as well. So thank you. Very much appreciate it. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Dr. Stock, Doctor of Education. We'll see you in the next video.